Australia and the Netherlands have joined the United States, Israel, Italy and Canada in boycotting a United Nations conference on racism in Geneva, fearing it could become a platform for anti-Semitism. But the Pope has given his blessing, saying the conference was an opportunity to fight intolerance. Iran's president, who's previously denied the Holocaust, will address delegates later today. Imogen Folks' report contains flash photography. Iran's president arriving in Geneva, the one major head of state to attend the racism conference, and the one the United Nations probably hoped wouldn't be able to make it. Israel, which already believes the UN Human Rights Council is biased against it, is horrified that Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, who has denied the Holocaust in the past, will address the Geneva conference. Already many countries, among them the United States, Australia and the Netherlands, have decided to stay away. Others are threatening to walk out if Mr. Ahmadinejad says anything unacceptable. Here's the problem. You had a uh, previous conference uh, in which it became a, uh, a session through which folks expressed antagonism towards Israel in ways that uh, were oftentimes completely hypocritical and, and counterproductive. Human rights groups are dismayed. They point out that the draft declaration for the conference, which took weeks to negotiate, makes no mention of Israel. Instead, they claim it's an ambitious and unbiased attempt to really combat racism which all countries should sign up to. There are another, you know, 185 or so member states of the United Nations who, as far as we know, are still in this conference. Racism is an issue that affects every country, everywhere, millions of people, many different groups. Uh, it's very unfortunate that one or two issues appear to have completely dominated the agenda, at least uh, from the perspective of certain countries. But instead, the Geneva Conference is becoming something of a disaster for the United Nations. It had hoped this event would be a shining example of what the UN can do, uniting nations for the good of humanity. Not this time. Imogen Folks, BBC News, Geneva. OK, let's go live to Geneva and speak to our correspondent, Imogen, folks. Uh, Imogen, so with so many countries staying away and other countries who are attending at uh, a rather ro low level of representation really makes a bit of a mockery of this, this uh, UN racism conference. Yes, I'm afraid it does. And I think there's a great deal of disappointment within the United Nations who had hoped that this conference could be an example of, you know, what the United Nations was originally designed to do, bring countries together, the rich and the poor, the weak and the powerful, to focus on a global issue of racial discrimination, you know, from which, which happens all over the world and which millions of people suffer from. But with all the controversy and with the fact that some countries, big ones like the US, have stayed away. It just, I think, cannot be the event that the UN hoped it would be. And this, what we're seeing at this conference, Imogen, is basically um, the reappearance of this age-old uh, fault line, isn't it, between uh, Middle Eastern countries, Arabic countries, and Israel. That's one of the things, although I think human rights groups would say that's one single issue and we shouldn't let this conference be hijacked by that. Having said that, it's certainly true to say that within the, U the UN's Human Rights Forum, Muslim countries, Middle Eastern countries do tend to bring up Israel, focus on Israel and its human rights record. And Israel really, really, really doesn't like that. And that's one of the reasons Israel said all along it wasn't coming to this conference. But the draft declaration for this conference, in fact, doesn't mention Israel at all. It doesn't mention the Middle East. Instead, it is a 16-page long document with some very, human rights groups say, useful advice for all governments on how to tackle uh, racial discrimination. Unfortunately, that document may disappear amid all the heated debate about anti-Semitism and about the, president, the presence of Iran's President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad here. OK, thank you very much indeed for now. Imogen's going to be, of course, covering that conference for us here at BBC World News. So you can keep right up to date, of course, with developments in Geneva here at BBC World News.